welcome to Super Woo Radio, where we are awakening into being free and sovereign. It's a place where minds hurt and hearts sing as we break through the barriers that have been holding us back. Be prepared to have belief systems confronted as we take the journey of the truth seeker for answers to life's biggest questions. Remember, truth is stranger than fiction. So come along for an awareness expanding experience with George and his amazing guest. Here on Super Woo Radio. Hello and welcome beautiful people to Super Woo Radio, episode number 13. It's great to be back for another stunning episode and today I have a guest with a difference and I'll tell you why. You know that I'm big on experiential um, because that's been the basis and the foundation for me sharing my wisdom. It's experiential. People tend to go about things in different ways. We have people that study on an intellectual level um, and formulate concepts and ideas from an intellectual, conceptual perspective. And then there's people that are quite experiential, such as myself. And then there's people that are in the land of both. And I have a very special guest with me tonight, and today was well, tonight for us, because we're recording in the, in the evening here in Australia. And I'm going to introduce to you a friend of mine, Vic, because I've known Vic for some time, quite a number of years, and we kind of were hanging out together in the early days of UFO groups and when I was going through the, my dark times of abductions and what have you, and, and Vic was there and I really appreciated our friendship and it's um it's an ancient friendship and we've come to realize that and i'm very um, happy that vic would come and want to share with the wider community his incredible depth of wisdom and so i'm really excited about this i want to welcome vic to super Wee radio it's great to have you on mate how are you george i'm really happy to be here this is my very first radio interview and so it's quite, i'm quite excited yeah, it, it is exciting to have you on too because I I know the man and I realise the magnitude and the depth of wisdom that you have to share with humanity. And so having you on the show is really exciting for me. Uh, I really urge people to listen carefully uh, to the content because we're going to cover some amazing areas. And what we're going to begin with is, you know, Vic wants to share his journey into uh, I suppose, awakening, you can put it that way. And um, I'm sure there's other labels we can use um, because there's going to be people who can relate to the path that Vic has taken and the experiences that he's had. And we're also going to delve into the world of technology because Vic has a, uh, for want of a better term, I'm going to use the description of quirkiness, a quirky sort of um, really deeply intuitive understanding of technology. Uh, it, it has impressed me from the very beginning, and I have the utmost respect for what Vic um, is, I would say, that the depth of knowledge that he has towards technology and the way it interacts with life. Vic, it's, uh, it's, it really is an honour to have you on the show. So where would you like to start? It's um, Take it away, mate. Thanks, George. I think that I'll start um, my journey from when I was really really young and i had a, a real excitement for for ufos and ghost hunting and all that kind of stuff uh, back in the years back in probably early high school years is when i first discovered that i had a passion for knowing what's going on and we knew that there's more going on that everyone knew about and i didn't quite know how to go about finding the information at that time it was a very different world that was the early 60s when um, you couldn't go to a local hobby shop um uh, TVs were black and white. There's very little technology around. There's very few books around. There wasn't the internet. And 
there was basically very few places to get information. So the information source would be people, people's experiences, and the occasional books that will come through. And so with that, I would try to find every single book I could find on the subject. And anybody who had any information or any experiences, I would try to interview them and, and try to learn from them to find out what was going on. And the frustration was that very few people knew anything at the time. And so at the same time, I also had a strong interest in electronics. So I decided to pursue that path to find some answers to what was going on, as well as looking for books and, and watching videos, or not videos, but watching TV programs and anything I could find on the subject. The very first thing that I tried was curling photography. This was back when I was about 14 years old, and wow. I had a mentor. And the mentor that I had met uh, was a man who, he was a very, very clever man who could make anything out of anything. And uh, he tended to keep everything as well. His house is absolute junk heap, but he could make magnificent things from absolute rubbish. And I found this guy so exciting because he had all the stories I wanted to hear about UFOs and meeting strange people and making strange things that could float in the air and all the things that would really excite me. And so from that point, um, he introduced me to curling photography, which was a, a way of photographing the aura. And so I went to his house and he explained how to make one. So I found bits and pieces. And what we used in those days were uh, like a car ignition coil, uh, a vibrating unit from old valve radio, um, some wires, a battery, and we made up a hand plate. And then we had to find some uh, photo paper and some developer and fixer to make it all work. It took a while to find this stuff, but when I found this stuff, I actually went home and tried it and it actually worked. And wow. it was really exciting because it was a simple device that you know had a really good effect. And at the same time, on TV, there would be programs, documentaries, that would be talking about how this guy had $500,000 worth of equipment to make this kind of photography work. And <laughs> for me, it was quite exciting because I had three parts and you know some wires and a battery and it worked and had the same result. Well, this is, this is what I love about your approach, Vic. Uh, and this is kind of like um, you know, one of the underlying messages in our discussion uh, this evening is that you don't need to be a major corporation um, with a budget of billions of dollars or some really high-tech scientific laboratory to actually achieve fantastic results. It just takes a nice, easy, simplistic understanding of the way technology interacts with life and then you can uh, really formulate your own devices from very accessible technology all around us. That's right. And from that point, I realized that you don't need fancy equipment to have an effect. And most things that I actually saw or heard about, I could make in a small scale at home that actually worked. And so um, with this kind of photography, it was quite exciting because you'd develop a film within a minute. So from the time you take the photo to the time you develop the film, about, about 60 seconds wow. to go through the process. And I could see effects. So I started to experiment to see whether there's any actual way of determining uh, your state of consciousness or you know how you felt or your state of health from this uh, killing photography and there was absolutely definitely a connection i could actually change the shape of the display just by how i changed my moods so i could choose what i thought about and and, and it would actually change the effect on the result of the paper wow and then i thought what would happen if i thought about somebody else in the room and it focused my attention to that person what would happen to the photo and what I saw was a secondary field going towards a person that was standing in the room. And I hadn't seen that in the results in the books. A secondary field? I, a secondary I'm gonna, field. I'm going to have to get you to explain that a little bit further because, yeah, well, a lot of people well, um, have heard, who listening have heard about curling photography, but um, this secondary field would be quite fascinating the most. In the initial part of it, you see a very strong field around the finger that you're using on the hand plate. That's the part we actually use is the finger because that's where the energy comes from, from the hand. Mm. And uh, the secondary field is like a basic an energy field going towards a person that you're thinking about on the film itself. You actually see the direction it's traveling. Wow. So you're saying you were able to capture in, you know, with photography on, on film the, the, the energy fields of intention – from one person to another. Absolutely. Wow. Oh, crikey. 
Oh, this is good stuff. And it was uh, quite interesting because I looked at the books on cooling photography and no one actually had done that before. I haven't seen photos anywhere where it showed that secondary field. So I tried other experiments like um, had a bit of plant growth on the hand plate and I photographed it and it has small energy field around the, hand, the uh, living organism. And I imagined energy flowing from me to that, to that plant without touching it. I imagined all this energy flowing straight through to it. Took another photo and it was a whole lot larger than it was originally. Then I waited for a while and took a photo again and it was small again. So I actually showed how, without touching anything, I could actually think about something and affect it. Wow. I'm, I'm stunned. This is <laughs> straight into the deep end here, Vic. This is really well, big <laughs> stuff, mate. I, I wasn't sure how to explain it, but I, I guess I could have explained the details a bit more. But this is like, for me, I was only a really young kid and mm. it was all working really fantastic. So And it's all portable, so I could take it to demonstrations. And I did actually took it to demonstrations all over the place and demonstrated to people how it all works. So I had given probably 20 or 30 demonstrations over that period of time. And when you say you gave demonstrations, where would you have gone for those demonstrations? What sort of people were you um, demonstrating to? People would, uh, groups would actually ask me to have a presentation. So I'd go to a place where I could produce a dark room. So that was somewhere where I can block the windows and have a, a totally dark room to develop the film. And uh, would use a, a red light because in black and white film you can have a, a, a red or a yellow light and still mm. see what you're doing. And uh, we could do it anywhere in someone's kitchen or someone's lounge room or anywhere. So and, do, you th- do you, sorry to interrupt, do you think you could reproduce that today but in colour? Very easily. Um, with colour you need a lot more control, temperatures and, and, and the process a lot longer. The reason that black and white was practical was because I could do a whole, like a whole photo within 60 seconds and give it to the person. Right. So it, it's just a fast turnover. Mm. It's very, very convenient. You can look at um, doing the same person many times and changing the mood and, and, and seeing what happens. With colour, it takes a lot longer. We did try something called Polaroid film, which was around the 70s, where the, the chemicals were inside the, film, the photo itself. That's right, and, the Polaroid. And it did actually yeah. work. It did yeah. work. You could see colour photos from that. Wow. So... Um, but we found that black and white was quite quite good. And even though over the years my electronic skills were developed, I made a lot more fancy equipment, but the result was no better. It was the same. So it was no advantage having fancy electronics running it. It so, was just as well. So my, my question is, you know, how old were you when you were doing these? I know you about mentioned 14 it earlier. Or 15. Yeah, about 14 or 15. And that's just astounding to hear someone at that age achieving these sorts of results or even venturing into these sorts of areas. I mean, this is you know, this is the playground of people like, um, dare I say, Tesla and those sorts of people. And, um, you know, that's the sort of company you're, um, you know, you're looking at.